Number four, ladies and gentlemen, Nestor Gomez. Go, 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 go. Give me some all. Oh, oh, yeah. You are my favorite. She knows exactly all. Oh, oh. Hey, come on, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Soccer mom! My wife and I had been together for a couple of months when one morning I woke up feeling sick. I had a lot of dizziness and nausea. I went to work anyway because I had to work and I spent the whole day trying not to throw up. Finally, when I got home, my wife told me why I had been feeling sick. She was pregnant. <laughs> I had a morning sickness. A couple of months later, I suddenly felt the need, the urge, the desire, the craving to eat some hot dogs. <laughs> I thought it was funny, so I spoke to my wife and said, hey, look, I have some cravings. And instead of laughter, I heard fear in her voice. She told me to get the fuck out of the house and go get some hot dogs for the well-being of our kid. <laughs> you see, we were very young when my wife got pregnant for the first time. As such, we were soon inundated by unsolicited advice from families and friends. <laughs> they gave us advice on everything from the things that she shouldn't do, like leave heavy objects, to the best expositions while her tummy got too big. <laughs> but there was, there was this one piece of advice that all of our Latino friends gave to us. Cuidado con los antojos. Beware of the cravings. They told us that all the, pregnant, all the pregnant women get crazy cravings, like guacamole favorite ice cream. <laughs> and that you have to get these cravings because otherwise the baby could be born with a defect or a mark that has something to do with a craving that you couldn't satisfy. <laughs> so I listened to this last piece of advice and I figured this is just all wife tells. I'm not gonna listen to this. But my wife believed it 100%. So a couple of nights later, when she woke me up in the middle of the night and told me that she wanted some fried chicken, I jumped out of bed and I ran in the direction of the nearby chicken joint. Now, I didn't have a car back then, so I ran about 10, 12 blocks, <laughs> hoping to get there before the place closed. But when I got there, the place was already locked. But then I saw a car driving away from the drive-thru window. So I ran to the drive through window, and I knocked on the glass. <laughs> I'm sure, okay? <laughs> but the cashier refused to open the window, and she went to call the manager instead. The manager came out and said that he wouldn't serve me because I didn't have a car, and it was against safety, safety reasons. And I told the manager that the only safety that I was concerned for was for my wife and my unborn child. <laughs> because my wife was crazy for some chicken and she was afraid that if she didn't eat any chicken, the baby could be born with chicken legs. <laughs> so the manager told me to wait a little bit and he went back inside and he came back with a box full of chicken and he gave it to me free of charge. <laughs> I say thank you and I ran home with a big smile on my face. My wife had a couple of more cravings after that, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Some candy, some orange juice, some chocolate. But then, a couple of nights later, I was walking again by some noises coming out of the kitchen. I got up and I went to see what the noises were. There, in the kitchen, was my pregnant wife, hysterical, on the verge of tears, frantically looking for some pomegranate in the kitchen cabinet. <laughs> she, had she had a craving for pomegranate, and when she, was, when she was unable to find it, she started to rub her belly trying to appease her baby. And then she started to cry and pray to God that the baby could be born healthy. So I calmed her down, took her back to bed, and I told her I was gonna go to the store to buy some pomegranate. But I couldn't find any, neither there nor anywhere that I searched for for the next two days. It wasn't until about a week that I found some pomegranate and I bought it to her. By then, her craving had subsided. But she ate it anyway, just to be safe. 
That was the last of her cravings. And a couple of months later, she went into labor. Now, I had shared some of the pains and the nuances of the early pregnancy, but I was so glad that I didn't have to share any of the pain or the, con you know, or, or the labor, <laughs> especially because it lasted 25 hours. Wow. I couldn't live through it. I don't think any guy could live through that stuff. I was beginning to get worried that it was because we couldn't find any pomegranate. <laughs> and I thought maybe I could go get some pomegranate and put it between her legs and tell the baby, hey, here, here, baby, come get it. <laughs> but thanks to God, that was not necessary, and the baby was born a couple of minutes later. When the nurse gave me my daughter for the first time, I immediately looked at her to make sure she was fine, that she was healthy. I looked at her eyes, her nose, her mouth, her two arms, her two chubby legs, nothing at all like chicken legs. <laughs> she was beautiful. She was perfect. But then she moved her leg, and I saw something that took my breath away. With trembling hands, I turned her around, and there, on her left butt cheek, I saw a birthmark on the shape of a pomegranate. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Gomez, Mr. Gomez.